Hello there friends and welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. I am thrilled you are here. This is one of those rare occasions where I get to do a video for a pattern that I have designed for yarn inspirations. I'm talking about the three in one hand warmer pattern. This pattern is written so that you can make fingerless mitts, convertible mitts, or mittens, totally your choice, all using one singular pattern. I will walk you through three separate videos to make this beautiful pair of hand warmers. On the first video, we will discuss the cuff. The second video will be all about the hand and the thumb gusset. The third video will be talking about the top of the hand, whether you're making the fingerless portion, the convertible portion or the mitten portion. So make sure you have bookmarked these videos so that way you are not left behind at any point in the pattern that you might need a little extra help. Now regarding the pattern, as I mentioned, it's at yarnspirations.com and it is a free pattern. I've put a link with all of the details you need in the video description box right down there below. Go ahead and grab that free pattern and grab yourself two different colors of worsted weight yarn, some hooks, maybe a stitch marker, and then we can jump in and get started on this beautiful set of hand warmers. I'm going to jump in today and show you how to make the cuff. For those of you who have never looked at a Yarnspirations pattern before, I want you to notice that the materials list is over here, and I used two different colors of Red Heart With Love yarn. And what I did was choose a solid color, and I don't know if you can really tell, this is sort of like a bluish, periwinkly purpley kind of color. And then I partnered it with a long color changing yarn, so a color um, uh, With Love stripes. By doing that, I get a really cool look in the pattern itself. I didn't have to change colors to get all of these looks as far as I didn't go from like this blue to this blue to this green to this blue. That's all done with the stripes yarn. So when you go to choose the yarn for your mittens, go ahead and choose one that has a long color change and then one that is a solid. Now does that mean you can't make these mittens with two solid colors? Absolutely not. Uh, you could totally can. You can make these mittens with one color if that's what you want to do. I'm just trying to let you know how I got the look I did with the pair that I made. All right. So along with the yarn, you do need a couple different sizes of hooks. And that's just so that the ribbing portion at the bottom is smaller than the body portion. Also, because the stitch pattern that I used, you want those stitches to be made a little bit bigger. It makes them easier to get into as we create that um, nice sort of V look okay so that's why you need two different size of hooks obviously here's a bunch of abbreviations that are used in the pattern itself but we will go over those as we discuss things here in the video and I'm on page two and we will get started right over here I do want to mention a little something about the sizing on this pattern I wrote it to be a one size fits most adult pattern so all that means is the distance around your hand at this point that's the circumference of your hand and this pattern is written for an eight inch circumference or written with an eight inch circumference just to give you an idea of how big the mitten is supposed to be the gauge for this pattern is listed right there so if you want to do a gauge swatch you have the information you need as far as the notes it does tell you that I made it so that each round is joined with a slip stitch and you will be carrying the yarn that you are not using across the rounds as you're not using it and we will work from a chart which is really easy um, don't let that deter you if you've never done a chart before because it's 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 very simple even if you have never read a chart you'll be able to get by no problem all right so we're going to get started with the cuff using our smaller hook we will chain 21. now i did use my solid color for this portion obviously the solid color i used for the cuff if you wanted to switch it up and use the stripes for the cuff you could do that too make this your own okay i have a slip knot on my hook right here and we will go ahead and get our 21 chains once you have 21 chains go ahead and working into the second chain from hook place a single crochet and then work a single crochet into each chain from hook. 
So at the end of this row, we will have 20 single crochets. When you put your single crochet in the last chain, go ahead and chain one and turn, or turn and chain one, it doesn't really matter. Now working back along this row and all the subsequent rows, we're going to work into the back loop only. So if you are looking at the top of those single crochets you just completed, I'm gonna go into that back part of what looks like a V. I'm gonna go into that back loop only and complete a single crochet. Now here is a little tip because there's a lot of people who always lose that first stitch of the row when they come back. Use a marker and once you've completed your first single crochet, put the marker into the top of the V right behind the loop on your hook. That lets you know where the last stitch of the row is so that way when you work back down on the next row, you don't get lost. It will ensure consistency in your stitching and you'll have a nice edge. Now you'll notice I am just working single crochets through the back loop only all the way down this row. And you wanna be very careful you are not accidentally pulling these stitches tighter than what you did on the first row. Otherwise, your work will be a little bit um, skewed so make sure you're keeping your stitches the same size as your hook that you're using. Remember, if you have that loop go up here to that part of your hook, it keeps the sizing consistent. That's the reason you have different sizes on hooks. And I'm just working all the way down. When you get to the end of the row, you can take a look here and you can see we have that nice little ridge there. And that ridge is going to give us the illusion of ribbing. And if you haven't put this together, we're working the length of the cuff as we work down the stitches. And as we work more and more rows, we're working the circumference around the cuff. Now you might ask yourself, Marley, why is the cuff so long? And the reason I made it long is because I hate it when um, snow gets underneath my mittens when I'm wearing them. So I wanted a nice long cuff so that way I could tuck it underneath my coat. If you don't like this long cuff but you want to follow the pattern, you can fold up the cuff just like so and then get a totally a different type of look. So there is method to my madness as far as why the cuff is so large. If you are an experienced crocheter and you would like to make your cuff a little bit shorter, you can go ahead and change up your chain amount and do so, totally up to you. But for everybody else who wants the long cuff or you just wanna follow the pattern as written, when you get to the end of row two, go ahead and chain one and turn, or turn and chain one, totally up to you, and we continue on. Once again, we work through the back loop only in each stitch all the way down the row, and I will go ahead and add my marker right there. I have used markers ever since I started crocheting because it makes the edges nice and straight and I never have to worry about my work getting goofy. And once again, make sure you are keeping your stitches all the same size. Don't accidentally start to make them a little bit tighter, which is very common. As people get more comfortable with the stitches, they make them a little bit tighter, and then their work is skewed because the, the stitches that they just completed are tighter than the stitches they started with. So you do wanna make sure you're keeping these stitches all the same size. Okay, I'm gonna get down here to the end to show you how to find that last stitch and how convenient having a marker there is. Here's the last stitch, I'll go into the back leg and it's marked for me. So I know I'm at the end of the row, I don't have to wonder if I need to put a stitch right there because I know I don't have to. I would chain one and turn, or turn and chain one, totally up to you. And then I'll move my marker up once I complete this first stitch here. Move my marker to that V behind the loop on my hook and then carry on. All right, so I'm gonna do one more. Let me show you. You can already begin to see that nice ribbing sort of look that we're getting, which is 
Absolutely awesome, right? You will go ahead and continue working row two until your cuff measures about seven inches. Once your work reaches the seven inches or the distance you're going to do yours, go ahead and work your chain one and turn. And this is what we're going to do. You wanna fold the work so that the wrong sides of the cuff are facing each other. And the reason I do this is I like the slip stitch on the right side of the fabric. If you don't want the slip stitch on the right side of the fabric, you can flip this around later. It's really not that big of a deal. But I have the, the wrong sides facing each other, so I'm looking at the right side. I'm going to work down this row through the back loop only, just like I've been doing all along. But as I go through the back loop only, I'm also going to work into the corresponding free loop from the foundation row. And then I will work a slip stitch. So I'm gonna pull my yarn over through both of those loops and then pull it through the loop on my hook. Go to the next back loop only and then go to the next free foundation loop. Make sure you get through the whole thing. And then work your slip stitch. You will do this all the way up. As you go through the last one and work your slip stitch, go ahead and finish off your work. So do a chain one and then cut your yarn. Leave a nice long tail so that way you can weave in your ends later. And I want you to notice something. By working that slip stitch seam on the right side of the cuff, it really lets it look like that join is just part of the ridge going around the cuff. If you look at the opposite side, you'll notice that there is sort of a blank spot where the seam is. And so I prefer to keep the seam join on the outside or the right side of the fabric because it just gets hidden in. And then as we continue on to the next portion of of the mitten, we will go ahead and work along the edge of our ribbing and you cannot tell where the join is on the ribbing at all. It, it all just disappears. So here's your homework. You need to finish both cuffs of your hand warmers. If you're making all three pair of hand warmers, go ahead and make all six cuffs. Whatever you're doing, go ahead and complete those and you'll be ready for part two, which will be covered in video two. If you have not done so, please hit subscribe to the Marley Bird YouTube channel so that way you are notified as soon as the next video is released or any future videos to help you become a better knitter or crocheter. I'm Marley Bird. This is the three-in-one hand warmer pattern and I hope you're enjoying yourself. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.